Hey everyone, welcome back to Ghost Prime Transformer Reviews. Now I know I've been absent a little lately, uh, but I do plan on coming back here with uh, regular reviews shortly. Today I'm going to take a look at Astro Train from the Siege line, or the Earthrise line if you're finding them in stores now. I picked this guy up on Hasbro Pulse. He is a $50 leader class figure. He's about the size of Voyager. This is becoming a trend with all the new figures. However, he fits into the line very well as far as scale. Is he worth a leader price point? I don't know, you're gonna have to, that's a question for you. Now, Astro Train was one of the very first uh, triple changers in the Transformers line. And I'm surprised it took this long to get him in a new version of him in this line. Now there was a Titans Return after train, which I didn't personally care for, so I didn't pick that one up. I absolutely loved the original uh, classics Astro Train. Um, I ended up having, I ended up getting the Hinkai version of that because I liked the colors better, and I gave the original to uh, my friend Can Spike. Hi, Can Spike. So, and then now the Titans Return started coming out with the larger triple changers. He just didn't scale right. So I'm glad they came out with one that scales right. He looks really good. He has really, really nice detail. He's a solid figure. I mean, I feel like I could drop this thing over and over again. He's got okay articulation. There's some things I wish they would have done differently or better. I think they could have. Without any further ado, let's get to the review. Let's start off with the packaging. This is the Siege version, which the Earthrise, of course, has Earthrise here. It has, a different, has different packaging. I did get this guy uh, earlier. I didn't pick him up recently. The The Earthrise ones are just now starting to show up in stores. So if you see this in stores, you probably will end up with the Earthrise packaging. If you're getting it online, you may end up having this one because I'm sure there's still some stock online. I purchased this guy off of uh, Hasbro Pulse. But standard Siege. Siege, War for Cybertron. There's the, uh, the, the you know, the insides there. The... Box art. Now, what I wonder is if they're going to use this box art for the Earthrise. It is really cool. There, I see no reason for them to use different box art, but it, and it does look really nice. So um, this one does have some. I don't know if you can see in the light, black light reflective thing where it looks like it just says Transformers and doesn't have much else. Got the symbol here. This is the same symbol in the back. But not much else. On the back, you can see the different modes. You have the launch pad, train mode, shuttle mode, robot mode. The side is the siege art. Top, just like the others, and bottom with just some. Looks like it's warning text in a bunch of different languages. Don't eat anything in here. Here he is in robot mode. Wonderful detailing. Very, very, very nice detailing. He does have that, that normal siege battle markings. This guy looks like he did some, like went on his knees and skid on the floor is what happened. That's what it looks like he was, you know, I mean, it's in a weird spot. It's nowhere else on him. It doesn't make a lot of sense, really. Inside the package, you do get a more than a few accessories. He comes with this little rocket launcher piece here. A gun. Another gun. Same gun, but opposite. Pegs, two pegs right there. Peg here, peg here, peg in the front. And a giant Gatling gun. He also comes with his storage for the weapons. It also doubles as a pull car. A launch pad, which I'll get into in the transformation. I believe it comes like this. 
in the package. Now, one of the things you could do with the gun, besides just arming this guy up, you could put the missile launcher on his shoulder, gun in the hand, each hand. Really, there's a ton of spots. There's a ton of ports on this guy. So you can fully arm him up. All right, if you if you ch so choose, put this guy somewhere too. You put this on one of the other pieces of the guns. You could do whatever you want to him. Put him in wherever you want. Also, the guns can combine. And what you want to do to combine the guns is you take the Gatling gun here, right here, and then you take the gun that has this the barrel piece like this and there's a port on the back that goes right into the barrel of the Gatling gun well I guess it wouldn't be a Gatling gun with a barrel like that but it looks like a Gatling gun and then they just slides together like that that's one big long gun this missile launcher piece there is a hole in the bottom that slides in like so so it fits under the two guns, kind of hides that peg there, which actually makes it look really nice as a gun on its own. And then you take each one of these guns on these, these pegs on these either side, and what they do is they peg into the holes here. And they go like, like so, on either side. And that makes a very large weapon that he could hold. And he actually has decent enough joints to actually hold that up straight. So that's very cool. As I mentioned, you can do some things with this in robot mode. It makes him a little taller, but not a lot. So this piece you want to open up. And then you could take these, just slide them right off here and they separate like that there's wheels on them just push those in as you see these pegs go on the pegs on the underside of the feet and do make sure you're putting the tread side here out so there's a large side and a thin side so the large side goes out and the feet slide in and he has Giant snowshoes! Or skates, because he has treads on them. I don't know. Now, what I think is really kind of silly is this back piece, backpack piece right here is just that. So you take the piece here, open these because it's tabbed in, swing it around, push it down like this, close these box pieces back up so it's open like that, and then... In the back here, where you have the thrusters, you take these pieces here and put the right in there. And that is his super mode. Which, uh, I wish they could have done something a little better with this. Makes this something. I, even if it were to fold up and be like a weapons thing, so all you put all the weapons, he has all these weapons behind him that are shooting in front of him, it'd be really cool. Or armor pieces, or something. It's almost like they're like, Hey, the fans talk about backpacks all the time, so we're just going to give them a backpack that they could put on the Transformer itself. We don't like backpacks. At least I don't like backpacks. Having a backpack that's optional, I guess, is good, but it's unnecessary. This is not worth $20. But that is his souped-up mode. It, these do make him a tad taller. So let's get him back in his base mode real quick. The base... Base robot, base form robot mode. Take off the enormous backpack. Ooh, tabs in there real quick, tightly. And let's check out <clears throat> some articulation on this guy. So for articulation, he's not too bad. He does, his head will go all the way around in a circle. It is, feels like it is on a ball joint because you could get some, you get some up and down movement on his head, 
not a whole lot. His arm can go up like that and up. It kind of hits the wing, but the wing can move backwards to accommodate a little bit more, which is really nice. That's a nice feature. I do, I do appreciate that. Uh, he has bicep swivels. He has a, due to transformation, a double jointed elbow. It is hollow under here, but that accommodates the fist, which because of that, he does not have any wrist rotation. Now he does have waist rotation and his waist can go all the way around. That is very nice. His legs can do the full on splits like this. And with these little flaps, move these little flaps up. He could have his, he could kick out like that. And he doesn't have flaps like that in the back, so it's only he's very limited as far as that's concerned. He does have thigh swivels, which are very, very tight on mine. His knees could bend almost, almost 90 degrees. That's due to all this, these, this transformation, essentially. His feet are on rockers. So he could, he could stay flat. Very cool. And as said before, should be said, because it does ha have to do with articulation, his wings can move back like that to allow for some better posing. Overall, not too shabby. You could get in some different, some decent poses. So for some size comparisons on this guy, here he is with Hink Guy Astro Train. I really love this guy. Beautiful guy. Beautiful figure. The purple looks really bright in comparison to this. It has a very dark purple on it. Here he is with Voyager Class Starscream. Here he is with Siege Megatron. Now, let's take a look at this. Just stop here for a second. Megatron, being a $30 figure, is taller than Astro Train being a $50 figure. This is what's upsetting people, Hasbro. It is a beautiful figure, though. Here he is with Generation 1 Astro Train. So as you can see, he actually scales pretty decently in the Siege line. That's very nice to have. This, the, the whole line scales really nicely with itself. But to get this guy into shuttle mode, it's it's not super difficult. Um, so one of the first things I like to do is I take his backpack or his wings, just kind of lift them out just so I have a little bit more room. And then fold the fists in on either side. The arms need to turn the turn the arms around all the way like this and there is this exposing a tab right here on the back of the shoulder and there is a little indent on the arm there and those fold into each other and tab in hang on let me get that see if i can get a good angle on that there we go like so and then what you want to do is you take this piece and unclip it so there's a little clip on the side right here that this piece snaps into so his arms don't rotate. When you rotate his arms in robot mode, this whole piece doesn't come up. That's something important. So mine is very difficult to get back when you're getting it back into robot, robot mode. It really is one of those things that I didn't realize at first. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of stupid. His arms are just loose. But no, they, they hold really well. So see, like, like that. Turn the arm back around. That all stuck together. Make sure it's straight in. Make sure these tabs right here are facing back. Now you can take the the feet and put them push them down like this. And if you look on the back of the legs, there's two little tabs that go into the holes on the bottom of the feet. 
in there and they snap into place. Snap into place like that. Take the legs pieces here and kind of pull them out. They're on a hinge. Oh, one thing I forgot to do first. Take the, the flat pieces for his waist and move them up and snap them over this area. Now you can move these up. They actually tap in pretty nice and tight. Then you can take the space shuttle head here, or the cockpit, and put all the tabs in. They'll tab directly into itself while you need to squeeze. So here, this piece right here, and this piece right here need to line up. So as you can see, there's it's got an indent, it lines up. And the same with sort of on the top. The top kind of goes over these little these little tab pieces here, these uh, areas that are on its waist. So they go over like that. You see it lines up here. And then there's tabs here that line up. And you just take it, make sure all the tabs are lined up, squeeze it together, like so. And there's the front part. One thing, another thing you have to do is take these, by, def by default, are kind of angled. So you open them up, move them straight down, and re-tab them. If you'll see, there's two little holes there that tab into this little tab right here. So when he's a robot, it's an angle, and when he's a shuttle or thing else, they're straight. So, And then, so you take, there's these two little tabs here, little flaps, so these little flaps. And then lift up and twist like this, and this has the rudder in there. Now, one of the things is these are supposed to go into down here, and there's slots here that are supposed to tab into here and actually get it to stay down really well. Mine, I can't seem to do that. I am going to try to do it right now again to hold it all together like this. While I take this back piece out, lift it up from the bottom, pull it around. It's got a tight joint. Pull it around like this. See if I get them all lined up. Because if I do, this will be the first time. Nope, see, it pops out every time. Let's try it one more time. Make sure that's in there. Yeah, it does not work for me. Oh, got it. So that is difficult. That's the first time I've ever gotten that to stay. So that stays. Anyway, so your mileage on that may vary. And there he is in a shuttle mode. So I'm sure you've seen it before. You see pictures. His shuttle mode leaves something to be desired for sure with this back piece. Now he does have this and you think, well, okay, well maybe you could, they took these pieces and you could find a way to put them on here to, you know, cover up the side. That would look probably decent. Even if it just covered the sides like this, it would look great. Uh, no, that's not the purpose of this at all. Actually, what the purpose is, too, is to put the feet back on the front, which snap, they snap here, and it pushes out these little wheels. This does not sit flat, and these are supposed to go like this. The back part piece comes up, and it's... Kind of like a transport for him. It rolls, but this is just not great. Um, it also becomes a launch pad. Out like this. It would look better if this stayed flat, which it does not. But it it does okay as a launch pad. It's all right. It's okay. Nothing to write home about. As I said, I really wish that this piece would go over the top of this and really just cover up some of this just unsightliness right here. Just open and looks unfinished. Just very unfinished. The front part's okay. And you could mount the guns here, 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 and here, uh, here, or here in 
the uh, jet mode, the shuttle mode. Now this, let's just take a look at this real quick because you are paying $20 extra for partly this. This is actually made pretty decently. It's got a nice black matte finish on some of these parts. This black piece here to cover up the hollow, hollow pieces, or that would these pieces that would be otherwise hollow. Unnecessary, but it's solid. It it just they they put a lot into it. There's pretty thick plastic in it, so you know this did cost a, a good amount to make, but they didn't need to. This would uh, the figure would have been fine without it. So to get this guy into his train mode, it's really simple. Uh, it's fairly easy to do. Um, so you just kind of open this piece here to get the to get the uh, rudder back out. Fold it in. Pull it down. Put it around. These pieces back down. This does expose the head again. These wheels here from the shuttle just open up like that. Take out. Take apart the legs. Take apart the shuttle piece. Now inside here, there is a bunch of there's a bunch of pieces. What you want to do is take each piece like this and move it around. Then what you'll see is a little piece inside, which is part of the chimney and part of the light for the train. And on either side, move that around. Then tab this together. So make sure it's all nice and pressed together. And then you can take the leg pieces and put them back where they were. Making sure all the tabs line up. Press them together. Everything's good. Now for the front piece, there is these wheels right here. Now they won't reach the bottom in train mode. So what you want to do is you take it and just kind of pull on it till it snaps. And what that'll do is it pulls it down, gets the whole front looking a little better. So now these pieces, of course, go down, the wings, like that. Very reminiscent of the G1. Let me put this back in here. Came untabbed. So very reminiscent of the Generation 1. Now what you'll see here are these little... There's tabs here. See if I can get them closer up for you. Tabs here, slots there. Take them in, push them in together. That will make these pieces stay together really nicely. So while this piece is still out, take this and fold this up. Make the other side, fold that around. And then there's tabs here and here. And this folds on top of that, like that, on either side. And there you have the train. Rolls incredibly well. Without a doubt, the best, the best uh, mode of this it is exquisite detail on this train mode. I just look at that. The purple colors actually line up a little better in, in, in person. The camera kind of picks up some of the differences in, in shade. But it has a ton of detail, a ton of paint on it. Very nice. It's just a it's a beautiful looking train. This is definitely takes the win for the best best of the three or the two molds, at least the alt modes. So now we're left with this. So what you want to do with this is kind of turn it back into a box. You want to make sure that this is facing out. So this tab each one of these go up like so. Well, this goes like this first. These tab into the feet, the bottom of the feet. Then you'll find a tab here, tabs into there, a tab here, tabs into, I can't see it. So a tab, sorry about that, tab here, tabs there, tab here, tabs there. Move that, close it, and tab it, close it, tab it. Now these line up in the back here, here, two on top, one on bottom. And the bottom with the rolly, the rolly bit here, and the two wheels up here, face down. These ones don't reach. Just plug it in as a coal car. It's pretty long in this mode too, almost a foot, about 11 inches. And of course you could take the guns and mount them 
this piece right here. You can really mount them wherever you want. Um, I like to put pieces on the side here. One of the guns on top. And put this one on the other side. Well, lots of things you could do with this guy. And he really does make a decent train. And the whole thing rolls just super nice together. And you can just hear that. I mean, that even sounds like a train. So there's a lot to like in this figure. There really is a lot to like in this guy. And I'm glad they went for the classic train instead of the bullet train. It's a very nice to see that hark back to uh, Generation 1 again. So some final thoughts on it. Well... That was more for Cybertron Astro Trade. He is packaged in Earthrise packaging now in stores, so if you see him in the stores, pick him up if you so desire. He is a little on the pricey side, being $50. He scales really, really well with the other uh, Voyagers. He's being a little shorter than Megatron. He is a really good, solid figure. I really like this figure. I think he's he's very good. He is going to be a replacement for my Inkai Astro Train. It's, some, it's a figure that... I'm happy to add to my collection. I do think the price point's high, and I think they should have done more with the the trailer. They could have made it a cover for for the parts that were exposed, uh, as I said in my review. He is a decent figure. Hits on architect. Uh, there is some hits for uh, articulation, but it's not bad for a figure that has this amount of detail and complexity to him. Overall, I, I give him a B minus, maybe a strong B. It, what it does well, it does well, and what it doesn't do well, it kind of runs away with. However, this robot mode, I mean, come on, way better than the Titans Return ones. So anyway, as always, like, subscribe, hit the downvote button if you have to, and I'll see you later.